Are you coming to Yuju's birthday party tonight? I don't know. I'm torn. I really don't feel like going there. It'll be so crowded. You know, I'm not really into noisy environments like that. But if I don't go, I'll feel bad for Yuju. Mina and Yin have been friends since they entered college. They became close because they were in the same group during freshman orientation. Mina, who is talkative, compliments Yin, who is a bit quiet. Currently, they are in their fourth year of college, which means they are just waiting for their graduation from this prestigious university in Seoul. You should come, Yin. All of our classmates are invited. Yuju is one of the popular students, so you can expect a big turnout. Who knows, maybe you'll meet a handsome guy there and hit it off. Mina grinned teasingly, while Yin rolled her eyes lazily. Another one of these conversations, she thought. Don't look so glum. Since starting college, you've never been close to any guy. You've been happily single all this time. I'm just not interested in having a boyfriend to much hassle. I'm perfectly content being on my own like this, free. Besides, there will be time for me to have a boyfriend later. Plus, who would want someone like me anyway? Yin stirred her watermelon juice in front of her. Mina sighed tiredly. Doesn't her friend realize how beautiful she is? Her clear eyes and fair skin, combined with her proportional body and wavy brown hair, made Yin very attractive to others. Many guys approached her, but Yin, true to her nature, seemed to close her heart and pretend to be oblivious all this time. Up to you. But you better come tonight. Don't say I didn't warn you. Alright? Alright, I'll come tonight. Are you going with Minju? Minju is Mina's boyfriend, although he's in a different class and major from them. They've been dating for almost a year now, and they're a very sweet couple. Yes, of course, I'm going with Minju. I already asked Yuju, and she said it's fine if I bring Minju to her party. So, you're leaving me alone there? You can always join me and Minju later. And become a third wheel between you two? No thanks. For Yuju's birthday party, it's recommended to bring a date. However, if you don't have one, it's not a big deal either. The cafeteria, already bustling, suddenly became even busier with the arrival of the favorite bad boy of the female students, Jian Jungkook. His handsome face with a strong jawline and sharp gaze made the ladies scream with delight. Jungkook entered the cafeteria with one hand in his pocket, while the other held the strap of his black backpack. His steps were confident and he occasionally flashed a thin smile when students greeted him. Jungkook is in the same class as Yin, but they've never gotten along since the beginning of college. Somehow, Jungkook always seemed to stir up trouble with her. When Yin's gaze met Jungkook's there was a look of hostility in her eyes. Jungkook's lips curled into a thin smirk. Without hesitation, he sat down next to her, causing Yin to startle and eliciting surprise squeals from the girls in the cafeteria. What do you want here? If you haven't forgotten, this is the cafeteria. Anyone can be here. But you don't need to sit here. There are plenty of empty seats over there. Why? Are you afraid of falling in love with me? I want to sit here, so deal with it. Jungkook smiled triumphantly, taking the liberty to grab a french fry from Yin's plate without permission. Oh, would someone be upset if I sat here? But as far as I know, you don't have a boyfriend. You've always been single until now. Following that, Jungkook reached for Yin's remaining quarter glass of juice and swiftly finished it off using the same straw Yin had used. Ugh, Jungkook is so annoying. Why does he have to be like this? Mina remained silent throughout, merely watching their argument unfold. Who are you going with tonight? None of your business. Or are you going alone? Mina will undoubtedly be with Minju. Jungkook continued, enjoying teasing her. To him, Yin's pouty face was incredibly cute and endearing. I already told you, it's none of your business. Do you even have a date for the party tonight? Mind your own business. Yin challenged him, her eyes now locking onto his with intensity. Jungkook, seeing this, chuckled softly. Alexa. Jungkook waved, calling over one of the popular girls. Yes? The pretty girl approached him with a sweet smile. Do you have plans tonight? No, why? Would you accompany me to Yuju's birthday party tonight? Jungkook flashed his trademark smile, making Alexa positively delighted. Of course, I'd love to. Bye, Jungkook. Jungkook smirked at Yin, who rolled her eyes in response. See, it's easy for me to find a date. Typical player. Let's go, Mina. Yin grabbed Mina's hand and quickly left the cafeteria. Jungkook smiled slightly, watching Yin's actions. He gazed at Yin's retreating figure with a look that was difficult to decipher. Shortly after Yin's departure, Alexa returned to Jungkook and sat in front of him. Oh, by the way, what time are we leaving tonight? Are you picking me up? I'm sorry Alexa, but I won't be able to take you. Why not? I just remembered that I have some errands to take care of tonight, so I'll be busy. But you already asked me earlier. I'm sorry. 
Jungkook put on a slightly guilty expression, causing Alexa to sigh softly. All right then, if that's the case, I'll leave now. Jungkook simply nodded quietly as Alexa stood up and walked away, leaving Jungkook sitting alone. In the end, I'll still end up going alone, how pathetic. Jungkook proceeded to finish the remaining fries on Yin's plate. Yin checked her appearance in front of the mirror. It was already 7 o'clock, and Yuju's event started at 8 in the evening. Since it was at a club, Yin wore clothing that was more revealing than usual. Yin felt somewhat uncomfortable in this outfit but she also didn't want to be underdressed. She wore a tight black knee-length dress that accentuated her curves perfectly. Her shoulders were left bare with a neckline that wasn't too low. Her long brown hair was intentionally left down and adorned with small ribbons to enhance her look. The beautiful makeup on her face added to her charm tonight. Okay, ready? I just need to show up, congratulate Yuju, have a little chat, and then head home. The atmosphere inside the club was bustling. Yin, who had already arrived, quickly found Yuju and wished her a happy birthday. Yin noticed Mina and Minja sitting nearby, laughing and joking around. Of course, Yin didn't want to disturb her friends. Yin went to the bartender's table and asked for a glass of water to soothe her dry throat. After drinking, she felt dizzy but then requested another drink of the same kind. Yin got drunk and leaned her head on the table. Suddenly, someone came and sat right beside her. Yin didn't pay attention to the man, she was still resting her head on the table. Hey Yin, are you okay? Since Yin entered the club, Jungkook couldn't stop watching her. His gaze sharpened, his fists clenched seeing Yin in such a state, he thought her outfit tonight was too revealing. When Yin was already sitting weakly, Jungkook approached her. Undeniably there was worry in his heart, seeing Yin like this. Oh hey, who are you? You're so handsome. You look like... Yin seemed to be thinking in her drunken state. Yes. It seemed like Yin was really heavily drunk now. Yin smiled, her face flushed, then laughed softly, her finger pointing to his chest. She's so adorable. Jungkook was also drunk. But he was still strong enough to be aware, he could even recognize Yin. Jungkook's body was quite tolerant to the effects of alcohol. Are you drunk? You look so beautiful tonight. Yin didn't answer. She leaned towards him and hugged him tightly. Jungkook, unprepared, almost fell. His hands immediately supported her body, hugging her waist tightly before she could fall too. Their bodies were now in extremely close proximity and pressed against each other because of Yin who was drunk, hugging him. Her nose sniffed his neck, making Jungkook growl. You smell so good. I love your scent. What perfume do you use? Once again, Yin sniffed his neck. It seemed, Yin had really lost her mind now because of the effects of alcohol. Damn, you're driving me crazy Yin. Hum. Yin looked up, staring at him with her heavy and weak eyes. She still hugged him, their faces very close. They could even feel each other's breaths hitting their faces. Her lips were slightly parted, making Jungkook unable to resist giving them a quick kiss. Finally, Jungkook took Yin to a room. There were several rooms available there. Yin, still drunk, just surrendered. Jungkook closed the door and locked it. He then kissed Yin again intensely. Her appearance had been making him dizzy since earlier. He didn't want to see Yin wearing such revealing clothes in public. Her body was too perfect to be shown off. Why are you dressed like this? Jungkook. Hum, yeah, it's me baby. Jungkook pushed her until she lay on the bed. His target now was her neck. He marked his ownership there. You belong only to me, no other man is allowed to get close to you, let alone touch you. Yin really drove him crazy. Jungkook had been trying to control his sanity since earlier, but he kept failing. And the sound that kept coming out of her mouth, repeatedly calling his name, made him completely lose it. Jungkook finally growled in frustration. Eventually, that night, they did something they shouldn't have done. One hour later. Now they were both done, Jungkook smiled softly, kissing Yin's forehead gently before pulling the blanket to cover their naked bodies. The next day, Yin woke up feeling uncomfortable. There was pain in her lower body. She blinked and jolted as soon as she realized this wasn't her room. Yin turned to the side and found Jungkook sleeping next to her. Her hands trembled as she realized she was wearing nothing and was under the same blanket as Jungkook. Yin cried. Arbsha felt incredibly foolish. What had they done last night? Her crying voice woke him up. Jungkook sat up and looked at her who still covered her face with her hands. What have you done? Yin. We were drunk last night, so. Did we really do that? Yin asked with a trembling voice. She was still shocked by the situation. I'm sorry, Yin. How can you be so calm, Jungkook? Is this nothing to you? Oh, because you're used to doing this with many girl, so you think it's normal? Yin was angry, sad, and disappointed all at once. Don't accuse me like that. You don't know anything about me. 
Jungkook's emotions were slightly triggered. He was annoyed that Yin accused him like that. You bastard. I'm sure you've slept with many girl before. I hate you. Yin got off the bed, put on some clothes, and immediately left the room. Her heart felt heavy, tears streaming down endlessly. She had failed to keep her chastity for her future husband. What if she got pregnant later? You're the first one, Yin. No one else. You're the first. Forgive me. Jungkook whispered softly. He looked sadly at Yin's, disappearing back behind the door. It's been two weeks since the incident. During that time, Yin has been avoiding Jungkook. No one knew about it. Every time Jungkook tried to talk to Yin, she always ignored him, so Jungkook could only watch Yin silently. Do you have a problem with Jungkook? Currently, Mina and Yin are at a cafe near campus. Yin sips her coffee with her eyes closed. The fragrant aroma of coffee calms her mind. Somehow, lately she has become a coffee lover. Whereas before, Yin preferred sweet drinks. When haven't I had a problem with him? It's not like that, Yin. Usually, you two argue every day. But for almost two weeks now, I've noticed you've been silent with each other. There's nothing wrong, Mina. I'm just tired of arguing with him every day. We're adults, not kids anymore. Despite Yin's words, she still feels suffocated every time she remembers the incident, but she manages to conceal it well. Mina squints suspiciously. She doesn't fully believe Yin's explanation. After all, for almost four years they've been in the same class. Neither Jungkook nor Yin has ever been willing to back down. But then Mina shrugs, not wanting to prolong the issue. Oh, by the way, speaking of Yuju's birthday party, where were you Yin? I saw you at the club, but after searching for you until the end of the event, you were nowhere to be found. Yin's body feels stiff. She's afraid Mina might find out what they did that night. She's not ready to tell anyone yet. Yin tries to keep her face normal. I felt dizzy at that time, so after meeting Yuju, I went straight home. Yin lied, her eyes lowered, she sipped her coffee to calm her mind again. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried something had happened to you. You rarely go to clubs like that. Yin laughs awkwardly. If only you knew the truth. Were you okay yesterday, Yin? What do you mean? Your period. Usually, on the first day of your period, you're always in trouble. Stomachache, dizziness, even fever. Yin was startled. Yes, their period schedules have always been the same. And if Mina's period had started yesterday, why hasn't hers? There's a fear within her. I'm fine. Suddenly, Yin loses her appetite. She's too worried about her current condition. That's unusual, but it's good that you're okay. One week after her conversation with Mina, Yin becomes increasingly scared. Until now, her period still hasn't come. She's afraid of what might happen, but out of curiosity, Yin finally decides to take the test. Yin waits anxiously in the bathroom, her hands trembling as she holds the pregnancy test. Slowly, Yin opens her eyes which had been closed until now. She's shocked to see two red lines on the test. Yin collapses in the bathroom, sobbing uncontrollably. What am I going to do, how? Her parents are in bison. They would be extremely disappointed if they found out their precious daughter was pregnant in such circumstances. She's terrified. Even though this pregnancy wasn't planned, Yin is determined not to terminate it. After all, this is her flesh and blood. Yin doesn't plan to tell Jungkook. She's afraid he'll reject her and think she's making it up. What's worse, she's afraid Jungkook will ask her to terminate the pregnancy. Yin knows Jungkook hates her. They've never gotten along. Today Yin arrived at the campus with a pale face. Since morning, she has been feeling nauseous, vomiting frequently and having no appetite. Yin is four weeks pregnant. Since the positive result from her pregnancy test, she has hurried to see an obstetrician and gynecologist. She hasn't told anyone about this. She's not ready yet. Her stomach is still flat, so no one suspects anything. Are you okay, Yin? Jungkook asked with concern. Earlier, he saw Yin almost stumbling and holding onto the door of the classroom. I'm fine. Yin harshly brushed off his hand. Her head was spinning. Yin insisted on going to campus because it was the day for submitting documents for her upcoming graduation. Your face is pale. Shall I take you to the doctor? Or should we go to the health center? Don't worry about me. My condition is none of your business. Yin glared at Jungkook sharply. Jungkook sighed softly. Yin walked slowly and sat in the back seat. Jungkook followed all of her movements with a worried expression. This evening is Yin's scheduled checkup. As usual, Yin comes to the hospital alone. While other patients are accompanied by their partners, Yin does it alone. There's a sense of suffocation and envy when seeing their situation. But Yin has to stay strong for the sake of her unborn child. Isn't that Yin? What is she doing here? 
Jungkook is accompanying his mother for her routine health checkup at the hospital. He accidentally sees Yin sitting in the waiting area. Jungkook becomes more curious when he notices Yin is in front of the obstetrician and gynecologist's examination room. Obgen doctor? Pregnancy? Finally, Jungkook calls his younger brother at home to immediately pick up their mother from the hospital. Hyuka, could you please pick up mom from the hospital? I suddenly have an urgent matter to attend to. Okay, brother. Okay, I'll wait. Jungkook closes his phone. His eyes remain fixed on Yin who has now entered the doctor's examination room. Jungkook waits patiently and a few minutes later, he finally sees Yin coming out. Quietly, Jungkook follows her from behind. After being outside the hospital, Jungkook then grabs her hand and takes her to a secluded spot. Jungkook, let me go. What are you doing? Yin stifles a scream. She can't afford to make a scene here. Jungkook doesn't respond. He continues to pull her hand and takes her to the hospital's courtyard, to a slightly shaded and lush area. Jungkook releases Yin's hand, and they stand facing each other. Jungkook stares sharply at her, who looks down. Explain to me why you went to the obstetrician and gynecologist. Jungkook speaks coldly, his face expressionless, holding back his emotions. Yin turns her face away, her eyes already welling up with tears. Pregnancy hormones make her more sensitive. It's none of your business. Jungkook moves closer, then touches Yin's chin, directing her face to look at him. Tell me, did what happened that night lead to your pregnancy? His tone softens, he can't afford to be emotional with Yin, or she'll become even more defiant. Yin remains silent, but tears now stream down her face. Jungkook squints, seeing Yin cry in front of him confirms his suspicion. Slowly, his thumb wipes away her tears. Are you pregnant with our child? Hum, was my guess correct? Yes, I'm pregnant. What do you want then? You don't love me right? That means you don't want this baby either. I want to raise this baby on my own. Finally, Yin confesses, unable to bear the suffocating feelings alone. Oh God. Jungkook pulls Yin into his embrace holding his beloved tightly. Yin continues to struggle, but Jungkook tightens his hug. Yin, exhausted, finally surrenders. She cries in his embrace. 